Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. What you just saw is our little army of white walker cats. They're all big fans of Game of Thrones and with Halloween around the corner we figured we'd give them little glowing contact lenses and have them wander around the garage. And obviously that's not at all what we did because it seems kind of cruel to put anything into the cat's eyes. All of that was done in Adobe After Effects and in this video I'm going to show you how. I know my tutorials tend to be on the long side and to make things a little bit easier for you guys to watch and for me to edit and actually get done, I've decided to split this tutorial into two separate parts. In this video, in part one, we're going to create that very unique and identifiable white walker eye texture in Adobe After Effects using nothing but inbuilt effects. In part two, we're then going to take this eye texture and track it onto Bella's face to turn her into a white walker minion. This is going to be an intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you are fairly comfortable using Adobe After Effects. For the tracking in part 2 we are also going to be using Mocha AE which is a planar tracker that comes inbuilt with Adobe After Effects since I believe version CS3. As always if you do want to follow along you will find a download link to the files as well as some related tutorials down in the description of the video so do make sure to check that out. But now before I talk your face off let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe After Effects and as always we are going to start out with an empty composition. Let's drag the file for this tutorial called bellaclosup.mp4 into our composition. This is just a really simple shot of our cat Bella and in this tutorial we are going to walkerify her and turn her into an ice cat. In this part, in part 1, I really want to focus on creating the actual insert for the eye, that very identifiable and unique white walker look from Game of Thrones. We are going to worry about tracking it and inserting the eye into the cat and compositing everything together in part 2. For now let's focus on creating the actual insert. If you've never seen Game of Thrones I highly recommend that you go and check it out. It's actually a really great show. But for now let's just pull up a reference image of what the actual White Walker eyes look like. This one here I found on Google and it's a really good representation of what we want to create. You can see that the large iris consists of multiple layers of distorted stringy patterns that are all kind of converging on a rather rugged looking pupil in the center. Obviously there's a few highlights as well that give the eye its shape and so we're going to use After Effects and create this pattern ourselves. Yes you could technically just use this image but a for the sake of protecting copyright and B in order to learn something more about Adobe After Effects let's just create this eye pattern ourselves. For that let's create a new composition and I'm going to call this one White Walker Eye and I'm going to set my resolution to a square resolution and I'm going to go fairly big so maybe I'll set this to 2600 by 2600. Maybe I'll set the duration up to exactly 10 seconds. Hit OK. And let's start creating the actual eye. Let's start out by laying down that dark noisy background for the eye. For that let us create a new solid. Let's call this one dark noise. Color doesn't really matter but I'm going to set it to black anyway. And now with the layer selected let's come up into effects and presets panel and apply the turbulent noise effect. Let me zoom in just a little bit and I actually want to create the eye fairly in the center. I do want to leave quite a bit of space around it so that when we composite it onto our cat we got a little bit of room to play with. But let's zoom in a little bit, come into the settings for the turbulent noise. Let's change the fractal type from basic over to turbulent sharp. I'm also going to invert it and that will give us this really nice noisy pattern. Next let's search for and apply a CC glass effect to this layer and come into the settings for the CC glass effect, expand the surface tab and let's change the bump map from dark noise which is the current layer over to num and then let's lower the displacement to minus 150, minus 200 to create this really nice organic sinewy pattern and this might start looking a little bit familiar to my energy ball tutorial because we're using kind of similar techniques here. That looks quite nice. Let's zoom in and one thing I actually do like to do after I've done turbulent noise or CC glass or other things I'd like to sharpen this just a little bit and for that let's apply a simple unsharp mask to our layer and just kind of makes it just that little bit crisper. So this is without the unsharp mask and this is with it enabled and it's just it's just that little bit crisper. Next let's deal with the color because obviously white walker eyes aren't actually white. They're kind of blue like a white-ish metallic-y blue. 
And for that, let's simply search for and apply a tint effect. And I'll use color correction tint. So let's just apply that to our layer and map white to under the tint effect settings. Let's change this over to the actual blue that we want. You can see immediately it shifts to the blue. So what I want to do is I want to go blue, but I also want to go fairly dark. I kind of want a really darkish blue and maybe a little bit of a green tinge so that we're going to layer different types of noise on top of each other to create a bit more of an interesting look for the eye. And I want the lower ones to be a little bit green tinted and then the top one is going to be a little bit more bright and blue. So I'll just push a little bit green into it, not too much. So maybe that looks all right. And now if we zoom out, yeah, I could imagine this being an eye, but it's, it's too regular. If you look at an actual eye, maybe let's bring up that reference image one more time. You can see that the noisy pattern of the iris seem to converge inward towards the pupil. So let's create a similar look. Now, there are a number of different ways to achieve that in Adobe After Effects. Let me actually just go into this layer and collapse all of my effects because we are collecting quite a few of them. One of the easiest ways that I found in Adobe After Effects to create like an eye style look is actually to use the liquify effect. So let's search for and apply the liquify effect to our layer. The liquify effect essentially allows you to draw distortions onto your layer. And under the tools, you have a whole bunch of different options of how you want to distort your layer. Over on the first row and the right, I'm going to select this Pucker tool here. I'm going to expand the Pucker tool options because right now my brush is really small. So let's just jack this up quite a bit. I can't go bigger than 600, unfortunately, but let's come onto our layer. And let's just click and drag right in the middle here. And you'll see what's happening is that I'm kind of pushing the noise pattern inward. So it looks like it's converging in on the middle of the layer where we'll obviously still have to create the actual pupil. I'm going to draw around just a little bit as well to kind of distort a little bit around the edges. And I don't want this to be too even. So I'm just going to click a little bit, kind of just distort a few of the outside areas of this eye just to give it a bit more of an interesting pattern around the pupil. So I obviously want to make sure that everything kind of converges very much towards the center here. That actually looks pretty good, but because we don't yet actually have a pupil, it also still looks kind of weird. So let's create a new solid layer. This one I'm going to call Iris Matte. And again, I'm just going to leave the color on black. Let's hit OK. And let's grab the ellipse tool. And sometimes when people are on this mask tool, they have a rectangle tool, you just click and hold to kind of have a selection of different masking tools. So let's pick the ellipse tool click in the middle. Let's just drag this out and hold on control to make sure the mask remains centered. I'm going to drag this out and now you can create any shape you want. You can have a lengthy eye or a very, you know, narrow vertical one. And because I do want this to match a little bit of a cat, so I'm going to go quite narrow and pull this up. It doesn't need to be too big because we have a lot of layer to play with. So I want to place my pupil fairly small right here in the center of the layer. So right about there looks all right but it is much too even. So let's come into our effects and presets panel and search for the turbulent displace effect. Let's apply the turbulent displace effect to our iris matte layer. And right now that is much too big. So let's just lower the size to maybe just a little bit, maybe 25 ish. It depends a little bit on the size of your layer and the size of your mat. So I kind of just want a little bit of noise around the edges. So maybe I'll go 15. I just want this to look a little bit irregular. You can kind of push this up a little bit more or less, depending on how noisy and rugged you want the pupil to look. So that's not too bad. I'm also going to expand the mask itself and just feather it out a bit, maybe 10, 15, just a little bit. So it kind of blends in a little bit nicer. And that's actually not looking too bad. Now, the last thing I want to do with this bottom layer is that usually when you look at an actual eye, the iris actually comes together around the rim of the pupil. Right now, it looks like our noise pattern just pushes all the way to the middle of the layer. So what I want to do, I want to come back to my dark noise layer, reselect the liquify effect. And what I want to do is I want to select this tool here on the bottom right, which is the reconstruction tool. And it allows me to essentially undo distortion. And right now my brush is way too big. So let's lower the brush size. And I essentially want to reconstruct and undistort the noise just around the rim of the pupil. So it looks like the iris reaches up to, but doesn't go behind the pupil. Let's bring this in just a little bit. And I'm also going to lower the brush pressure to maybe 20. I just want to very lightly undistort this essentially. Maybe I'll make the brush just a little bit bigger again. I'm just going to kind of draw a little bit. Now my computer is getting a little bit slow, but you can see how we are creating more detail again around the rim of the pupil, how the iris looks like it's actually connecting rather than just going behind. 
This would greatly help making this look like an actual eye. Well, a, a White Walker eye at least. I might actually also paint on and reconstruct a few spots here and there on the iris itself, just to add a bit of more interest and variance to our eye. Feel free to do this as you please. I really just want to add a little bit more detail into the layer. Yeah, I think that'll do. So now we've created the noisy background pattern for our White Walker eye. Now in order to add a little bit more interest and depth to this eye, I want to add a second layer. Right now, however, my iris matte, and I'm just realizing as I'm editing this video that this layer should really be called pupil matte. This layer right now is just a solid layer on top of my dark noise. I'm instead going to use this layer as a proper track mat and for that simply change the track mat option on the dark noise layer below from none to alpha inverted. It will look exactly the same but now the pupil is actually being cut out of the noise layer below. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with. Also because I'm going to add another layer of noise on top of this one and blend them together I think I kind of want the bottom one to be just a little bit darker. So I'm going to come into my turbulent noise settings. Let's bring in the contrast a little bit. Let's also really lower the brightness until this is pretty dark. Yep cool I think that actually looks alright. Now with the dark noise layer selected as well as the iris track mat on top press ctrl D to duplicate those layers. I'm going to rename this second, this top dark noise layer to bright noise. And I'm going to change the mode from normal over to add. Now, because right now both of these noise layers are exactly the same, essentially just got a little bit brighter. But with my bright noise layer selected, let's come back up into the turbulent noise effect. Let's start changing some of these settings. For one, I'm going to jack up the evolution quite a bit just so that those two layers are pretty offset from one another. I'm also going to expand the transform and maybe I'll just scale this up a little bit. Maybe 150 or 200. I'm going to play with this later and obviously tweak this to your liking. Next, I also want this top layer to be quite a bit brighter than the one at the bottom. So I'm actually just going to push up the brightness maybe to around zero. But I'm also going to increase the contrast because I don't want quite as much of this eye to be bright. So yeah, maybe around 100 is actually not too bad. That actually looks kind of cool. Let's just change the color a little bit. So let's come into our tint effect and change this map white too to something a little bit more bright and blue. So let's push this in a little bit. Cool, that looks all right. Actually, I might make the bottom one just a little bit more green tinted. So let's come back to our dark noise, reselect our tint effect. I'm going to shift this to a little bit more greenish to be honest, just so that the background stands out a little bit different from the foreground. But obviously tweak this to your liking and change it to any colors that you want. Let's reselect our bright noise layer. And now one thing I do want to do is that right now both my dark noise layer as well as my bright noise layer are using the exact same settings for the liquify effect so that being distorted in exactly the same way. I think I just want them to be slightly different so I'm going to redo the liquify effect on my bright noise layer. For that, select the bright noise layer, come into your liquify effect and let's press reset on that. I'm also going to temporarily hide my dark noise layer at the bottom so I can see what I'm doing at the top. With this liquify effect, again, let's select the pucker tool, increase the brush size to, well, 600 is as big as it goes. And let's just pull this in. So just click and drag to pull the iris in onto the pupil in the center. And I might just click around just a little bit on the outside, just to kind of distort this a little bit more organically. And now in the liquify effect, let's reselect the reconstruction tool and obviously make the brush size quite a bit smaller. So maybe around the hundred ish and let's lower the brush pressure to maybe about 20, 25. Obviously you don't want to undistort too much either. Let's just draw right in the middle to have the noise from the iris converge, but somewhat connect to the rim of the pupil. And again, I'm just going to click into a few other areas to add a little bit more detail into this effect. And let's re-enable the bottom layer and check out how this looks together. And I think this is actually starting to look pretty cool. The last thing I might want to do is right now, both of these track mats for the pupil, intelligently named Iris Mat, good job Tobias, are exactly the same. So let's select the top one. And again, let's just change the evolution and push this out a little bit, just so that the pupils are being cut out slightly differently from the dark and bright noise layers. It just adds that little bit of extra detail to the effect. Maybe I'll bump the displacement amount on the top mat up a little, just to distort it a little bit more. But again, feel free to play with this and tweak this and do whatever you want with it. 
So now we've created this really cool looking white walker eye texture that we can then take and track back onto Bella to turn her into a really evil looking ice cat. Before I close off this tutorial though, there's one last thing I really want to show you because it's kind of cool. Let's jump back to the white walker eye. Let's create a new adjustment layer at the very top of the composition and let's call this one dilation. You can use this adjustment layer as well as a liquify effect to create a really cool animated effect of the pupil contracting or expanding according to the amount of light around. So with the dilation adjustment layer selected, let's apply a liquify effect. And in the liquify tool, this time I'm going to use the bloat because our eye is already pretty tight. The pupil is already pretty small. So I'm going to use this bloat tool, come into the bloat tool options. Let's expand this to, well, 600 again is the biggest we can do. Let's simply click and draw a little bit in the middle to kind of push this out again. And the cool thing is that the liquify effect in the options has this distortion percentage here. And you can actually animate this so that the pupil will dilate or contract according to how much light is in your scene. So you can match it up to your shot and make it look a whole lot more realistic. Anyways, I just thought that was nifty and I really wanted to share it. I hope that in this tutorial you learned how to create a cool looking white walker eye in Adobe After Effects. And in the next part, we're going to take this image and track it onto Bella the cat to turn her into a minion of the White Walkers. And that's all there is to it. Do let me know what you think about me splitting up my tutorial to make it a little bit more manageable and hopefully a little bit easier to watch as well. I always appreciate your feedback. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. If you do want to see some more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials just like this one and you're new here, please consider subscribing. And remember, part two will be coming out pretty soon. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later. Thank you.